Hi everyone, I'm Christine Lucrezia Corner, editor in chief at Cointelegraph. We are in Dublin and we have a quarter of an hour before we are going to the oldest bar in Dublin mm -hmm. to talk about very important issues of trust and safety in Web3. David, Tomer, can you please introduce yourselves and explain what is exactly your role in making this world better? Hi everyone, my name is David Taylor and I'm the token architect at Next Earth. We're an Earth-based uh, metaverse company where uh, we are creating true digital ownership within the metaverse. We created a replica of the Earth and uh, selling virtual land and turning uh, the Next Earth into a platform as a service provider to make all metaverses interoperable and uh, basically allow true agency and decision-making for people over their digital avatars. I like it Earth-based. So are you planning to scale to Mars-based? <laughs> no spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move to... But to, yes, we are. To Tomer. Uh, sure, yeah. So um, I'm Tomer. I'm at Active Fence. Active Fence you know, is not a native Web3 company. We actually started primarily working with Web2 platforms when they came to us and said, you know, we're deploying a lot of AI, we're throwing armies of moderators, but bad actors are just able to circumvent and evade detection and really just keep poking at our defenses until they get around them because they have strong will powers, whether financial or ideological or sociopathic, they have strong willpower and they continue to get around us. And what we add is essentially the element of intelligence. Um, not only building defenses and you know better uh, uh, guns, bombs, and and and, uh, and protection, but actually going beyond the fence. Hence our name. Uh, finding out what bad actors are saying, how they're trying to exploit, what they're sharing, uh, how they're evading, obfuscating their steps, and so on. Um, and uh, I guess in Web three, uh, a lot of those problems exist. A lot of those problems are more severe. Some of them are less severe or even completely mitigated uh, and we're super excited about this space just because it's a uh, it's kind of just a whole new playing field for bad actors yeah, oh, uh, yeah. and it's a, it's a different playing field so you know when you play in a different field you have to learn uh, especially in our space of intelligence right how do we adapt and how do platforms adapt so how should we tackle these problems like bad actors uh, are always trying to be smarter than anyone else. How do we protect this new Web3 space from the problems that we had in Web2? Uh, and how do we, as a community, actually empower uh, the goodwill uh, and protect it from the evil? Yeah, yeah, it's basically a, 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 a never-ending fight against entropy, right? It's, mm -hmm. If you stop like upholding whatever little measure of order you created then it just all crumbles down so this is again as we keep telling people and we've we've measured it like if we stop reminding people to only focus on what we tell them and only click on official links uh, if we stop saying that the amount of support tickets that they create because of scams it just skyrockets mm -hmm. so I think there's one aspect that we as like platform providers we can do is education and just constant education. It will never be it will never be enough. We will always have to find more and more ways to who educate. Who exactly people. do we educate? Like those who are good or neutral in order for them to be protected from bad actors? Or can we also educate bad actors? Like those people who yeah. nah. not, don't try to fix fraudsters or Nazis or terrorists, right? They will remain, they existed before the internet, and they'll exist after. What you can do is to not give them a platform, right? Yeah. Help not, uh, don't allow them to manipulate and radicalize kids. Not give them the platform or like, give Prevent them, them the... from entering the platform if you can, okay. catch them once they enter if you can. Is it possible to ban someone from the Web3 space? You In cannot you cannot ban them, but with the right measures and the right strategy, whether it be uh, actual tools or moderation or or intelligence or education, you can make it incredibly hard for them to be productive, to propagate, to sell, to groom, whatever yeah. they want to do. You can limit uh, them as much as possible. Yeah, 
right? And and again, like you mentioned, it's it's impossible to it's like yes, we got the last, you know, pedophile off the platform. Uh, you never will, uh, and they're always going to be there. Uh, but uh, it's that fight of continuing to limit. Can we reach. get into some examples, like in metaverse, for example? Yeah. Have you already encountered? Uh, some concrete cases and what are these cases? I think okay. it's really interesting yeah. for, for the views. Uh, I, I, have, I have two very specific examples. Uh, one example is that uh, when we launched our token, um, anybody can list any token on a decentralized exchange, right? So the moment the token was launched, somebody listed our token on Uniswap and put in $100 liquidity. and they started selling their own token because then people were like, oh my God, NXT is, is, uh, is liquid. Now it's on Uniswap. So let's start trading. And they just shut up the price and they started selling immediately. And we needed to get in and take active measures to uh, basically empty out the, f the, the fraudulent liquidity pool and then basically wipe it off the face of Earth or the face of Nexter. Did you identify it quickly? Uh, yeah, it was like within 10 minutes okay. mm -hmm. because we were already deploying our own liquidity pool on Uniswap when it happened. So it's like, and you can take some measures, but you can never completely erase that. Once that was done, the same thing happened on QuickSwap. But then by that time, we've already educated the community, right? And actually there were not too many people who were trading that. But that was that was a prime example that it's not necessarily malicious actors, it's just opportunistic actors who are trying to make quick bucks, not even by, um, by scamming people, just by, I, if I'm the person that lists a token on Uniswap, I'm gonna get all the trading fees and that's it. But then it all goes sideways and, and, and it doesn't really work. There was also, we could also find uh, like uh, fake launchpad websites that were claiming to launch NXTT. Like and the example you gave from the satellite image before. And there, is, and there is that example that we started identifying uh, harmful, like if you buy land on next earth, you get like 10 by 10 meter tiles on the, on the map of the earth. But so you decide. You what, can, you can, yeah, you can form. create your own kind of collection. You can buy a land that's like a square or a rectangle, but you can also like buy any sorts of uh, any sorts of shows. So, well, so obviously when uh, we really quickly started seeing that, uh, you know, people were buying land in the shape of a swastika uh, in Poland and, and all sorts of harmful messages, they just started popping up. And, but also what was really interesting, which was not necessarily like harmful things, but it was harmful for the community and for the entire ecosystem when people were buying just one tile every kilometer in an, in an area that was highly sought after. Which means that I cannot buy the entire stadium anymore because somebody just bought that one tile. Why? Because if you want to buy the whole thing, you need to reach out to that person who owns that one tile and they and arbitrage it and arbitrage it to hell. Right. Okay. So then we're like, we got into the product. But is it like team. malicious or smart in your opinion? So again, opportunistic. It's more of the opportunistic, right? Opportunistic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is, it, it's, it's like water, right? If there is a crack, water will flow through it. And this is, this is with opportunism as well. You mentioned the interesting cases of crime in the metaverse. I think one of the most interesting ones, as you know, there's part of the metaverse in the video gaming, I guess, branch of the metaverse is kind of co-created games and kind of uh, the fact that there are many platforms today that enable users to pretty much code anything, any kind of yeah. game and let other people play these games. And I felt like one of the more interesting cases, and I can't, you know, as I mentioned to you, can't mention any company or any identifying detail about the work we do, but essentially <laughs> people were creating games on the platform that if you got an invite link, and you were on the invitation list, both of those, then you would enter this game. And this game was very, um, very much against their community guidelines, mm -hmm. right? And I was talking to the head of trust and safety at this company and they were saying, hey, maybe you guys can get yourself on the invite list and then walk around and 
these games and essentially, you know, <coughs> which there were types of parties, let's call them, and walk around the party and try to or see who's organizing the party. And for me, it was yeah. like this, my, you know, this look into the future of, of crime in the metaverse where, you know, you actually have the platforms themselves are powerless. <laughs> they don't have a God mode that they could just, you know, go in and, and see everything and do everything. Cause you kind of want that, right? You want encrypted spaces. You want yeah. as a creator, as a platform to provide your users, just like you don't want Facebook looking into, you know, group WhatsApps, right? Yeah. Because you want that privacy from the platform, but it creates these huge issues, right? Beyond just words in a WhatsApp group, right? This could actually be, you know, they've seen reenactment of the Christchurch shooting and, you know, different horrible events like this. That you know. This is what I keep saying about the metaverse, that um, large companies tend to make bets on the metaverse being this VR phenomenon. And I think it's really a, a, a mistaken approach because what's really happening, in my opinion, is that the metaverse is not a place, it's a point in time, right? It, ever since we invented the telephone, we were aiming to to digitize the human experience more and more so we can break down physical boundaries and we invented the television and we started looking at screens about 10 percent of our time then we invented computers and started looking at at the uh, screens about 30 percent of our time and now we have smartphones and we're basically spending half of our awake time looking at screens and being in like a digital world in our head and this is when your digital life becomes a lot more important to you than, than uh, or at least as important to you as your physical life, right? Because well, it's one of the same, right? Like yeah. people don't see the difference between you cursing my avatar and you cursing me. Exactly, you because it's an extension of you. It's, it's, it's an extension of you and, and your brain, like psychologically, your brain just basically like blurs the boundaries. Like you actually feel, my, Emotionally, mentally, you feel what's happening an to your attack avatar. attack on my Twitter handle is an attack on me. Exactly, right? right? Yeah. Reading all those slurs, you could just log out, but you keep reading and it still hurts like hell. I guess to your point about harms, when, you know, that's everything we've been saying around blurring this digital line and having your actual physical, you know, your identity <laughs> online, that's why harms, I think, in this topic of trust and safety um, is so important as we march to the metaverse because you know what is uh you know uh, radicalization or, or all these different things or grooming or sexual harassment in the metaverse it's just that much more real right just like your your beautiful experiences are going to be more real right your video yeah. game experiences yeah. are going to be more real also harassment and uh you know different forms of abuse are going to be more real just look at what happened in Ori in horizons yeah. Right? Within a week of launching. Within a week of launching, there was the first uh, first rape, and uh, and then all the radio hosts and the TV hosts were like debating how can you rape somebody in the metaverse. But like, you, if you would look at the therapist's notes, I guarantee that the trauma yeah. was real. It was even a few weeks ago uh, to like someone account take, there was an account takeover of a girl's Roblox account. And uh, and her friends were with her. And then this person who uh, who took over the account did very obscene things with the character. <laughs> and the friends, which were there, were kind of witnessing it and traumatized by it. Right? Yeah. They went to their their psychologist in the school afterwards, and they were saying like, "Why did you stop playing?" But people don't get this this generation generally of that that have born into this metaverse. It's not, not just that, but quit, not right? just that, but an immersive experience is, is a two-way street, yeah. right? The moment you get into the immersiveness, you start forgetting that you're not here, but actually here, yeah. right? It's just when I remember the video games that I was playing 20 years ago, my memory shows me like, as if the graphics were Unreal Engine 5, as if like I was in the game. And then I, I have this sense of nostalgia. I load up the video game and I'm like, Oh my God! Red this Alert is, really was not yeah, that good. Graphics. It was not that good. I remember it being like completely indistinguishable from real life, and then it's just really bad graphics. Well, top notch for the time, but because your brain fills out the blank spots, 
and and that is a really powerful tool for the human brain but it's also very dangerous when it comes and it's not to well researched yet i mean and it's not yeah definitely not and well now we are still not mainstream at all and like it's still <coughs> a small community that the majority of which is sharing the same values yeah etc like when do you think we will be ready for mainstreamization like i think it's a not a question of whether or not we're ready for it so we'll just go mainstream and then we'll solve problems when i got into arrive. when i got into crypto seven years ago there were five million wallet holders in the world today there are more than 300 million within the next five years next five to seven years we're probably going to reach one and a half billion and just imagine that there are, there are a billion people five years from now who are going to be everyday users of web3 technologies who know absolutely nothing about this today the values they bring the preferences they bring the the needs and the desires they bring we just cannot know it yet and we are not really controlling whether or not they're joining because businesses are being built and uh, new products are being created and uh, i have this notion what i call the gateway experience like most marketers right now are salivating over the idea of just putting their brands in front of uh, consumers in the metaverse but on the other hand consumers have no bloody clue what the metaverse is right so this is this uh this disparity and i think those brands that will be able to create experiences within the metaverse without their consumers knowing that they're participating in the metaverse or having to do anything differently those will win in this game from a commercial standpoint but that means that my grandmother will be in the metaverse in five to ten years and she will know nothing about it just like she has no idea about facebook messenger she doesn't care what platform she uses if she gives me a video call all she cares about is that she wants to see her grandson mm -hmm. right and that that's is why uh, my grandma clicks on fraudulent facebook ads yeah. all the time oh, yes. right oh yes uh, because uh, <laughs> she is not used to consuming the information this type and i think that when we get into the world of the metaverse and web 3 even folks you know uh, my age in the mid 30s are suddenly not used to consuming information yeah. this way and and i'll get tricked and hoodwinked uh, easier right so yeah I'm inherently. I don't think we're ever going to be ready or not ready. It's right? just going to It's going to be a gradual. Yeah. And I feel like, look, I can tell you today versus five years ago, I'm a better consumer of information because of the lessons learned over the past five yeah. years. Right. And it, so it's a, it's a gradual thing. Like, and we're probably going to get hurt and we're going to get burned and there's going to be another you know 2016 uh, election crisis yeah. and there's there's gonna be a lot more of these crises that humanity will undergo important that we move forward yeah but but we're, it's not gonna stop us moving stop. forward right uh, so it's basically like we keep this uh fight against entropy going on we keep fighting the good fight and then we just we know that we're expecting to be hurt we're expecting to make mistakes and and just basically screw things up mm -hmm. And we're just basically hoping that we're not going to die in the process. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that it's not going to kill our democracies <laughs> or, you know, create uh, hate groups that are uncontrollable. And, yeah. Uh, but, but I do think that, the, that these past seven years have taught us a ton in Web2 on, on, on how we better prepare for Web3, right? I think there were necessary lessons, right? Whether you take Christchurch uh, or you take... Uh, uh, you know, the March of the Right in Charlottesville in the U.S., yeah. right? And you take uh, cases like uh, ISIS putting beheading videos on YouTube. It's all these horrible things that happen, but they teach valuable lessons on, you know, the, the, the pitfalls of user-generated content. And that's kind of the core of Web3. It's user-generated everything. Yeah. So, like, evil and good are... Part of the same. Our, our, our world is built no. on duality. You can yes. never get rid of one without getting rid awesome. of the well, other. Well, let's move forward then. And Okay, the, the bar is calling, I guess. Yes, yes looks like it. Thank yes. you so much, guys, for this uh, thought provoking and very yeah. important discussion. This was really deep and I really enjoyed it. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. Me too. Good luck with your projects. and. Thank you. Let's talk in a few years yeah. about the same. <laughs> we'll see where we are. Hopefully, okay. we're yes. all still optimistic. <laughs> And alive. Yeah. <laughs> Hope that is lost. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Doug.
Thanks, Dublin.